There are places in the world where the gospel of Jesus has never yet been preached. Dr. Mary Ho says, in order to reach these places, we need a generation of people willing to give up everything. And that missions is not just a a romantic two-week trip. It isn't just an adventure. Since the days of Jesus Christ, since the early church, Uh, Many, many men and women have paid a dear price uh, to share the gospel. She says stories of those martyred on the mission field remind us. Not only to go, but what it takes to go. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help, right now on the Voice of the Martyrs radio network. In our ultra-connected society, it may be hard to believe, but there really are places completely cut off from the rest of the world. North Sentinel Island is in the middle of the Bay of Bengal. It's governed by India, and the people who live there want nothing to do with the rest of the world. They violently resist connection with anyone outside of their island. One year ago this month, a young man named John Chow paddled a kayak to shore on the island to share the good news of Jesus Christ with the inhabitants. He was shot with arrows. And after the arrows that took his life, arrows of criticism flew in the mainstream press and even in the church. Last week, Dr. Mary Ho helped us get to know John Chow better. She is the international executive leader of All Nations, an organization that trains and sends missionaries, including John Chow. She worked with John and she gave us insight into his life and mission and calling that many of the news reports a year ago were missing. Today, we're going to hear part two of my conversation with Mary. But first, let's review some of what we heard last week here on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Well, John Chow, he was a young man who, since he was 18 years old, uh, knew that God had called him to share the love of Jesus with the North Sentinelese. And he knew he wanted to go there. He did mission tri- short-term mission trips to other places like Iraq and South Africa, uh, different places to prepare himself. But I remember him calling me for the first time uh, maybe two and a half years ago or three years ago, and he said, I'm John Chow, and God has called me to take the love of Jesus Christ to the North Sentinelese. He knew, I mean, that was the first thing out of his mouth. For those who know him, he is just a really down-to-earth young man, just very humble, very down-to-earth. John is actually one of the most well-prepared and intentional missionary I've ever met. When he was around 18, he had uh, just came back from a short-term mission trip to Mexico. And when he came back, he started Googling on Joshua Project for unreached people groups, and he discovered the North Sentinelese. And we know that shortly around that time, he really felt like God called him to take the love of Jesus uh, to the North Sentinelese. And since then, he has basically made all his major decisions around that calling. So for example, when he went to college, he majored in health, in sports medicine, because he wanted to prepare himself to go to the North Sentinelese. He got himself trained in uh, wilderness training, emergency medical training. He went to 
SIL, Summer Institute of Linguistics, to get trained in linguistics. Uh, he would read about like 40, 50, 60 books in anthropology a year just to prepare himself. He started working at um, a national park so that he can physically train. So physically, he was very, very fit. He, he can climb high mountains, he can you know, swim uh, in seas, but he has been preparing himself for this for about seven, eight years before he finally went to the North Sentinel Island. We knew where he was going was hard, it was dangerous. We knew there was high risk. And when he, he reportedly died, being shot by bow and arrow, we were just we were just devastated. You're listening to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. We've been hearing highlights from last week's conversation, remembering the life of John Chow, killed one year ago this month on North Sentinel Island. Dr. Mary Ho leads All Nations, the missionary sending organization that worked with John, and she's been sharing many of her memories about John Chow, the person that she knew and worked with. She says that John didn't wait to get involved with missions until he went overseas. Even when he was training in the United States, he wanted to share Christ with the people around him. No one was too little uh, for John. No one was too unimportant for him. When he was at our training, uh, they had to go out two by two to share Jesus in the streets. And so he went with... um, another fellow student and they they walking the street and he saw this little boy who was playing basketball by himself so he just walks up to this little boy and say hey you need someone to play with you so he spent the next few hours playing basketball with this little boy and then sharing about Jesus with him and that's just that's just John it's wow. totally unrehearsed but no one was too unimportant for him Tell me more about All Nations. Well, I, I see the statistics of, of all the different countries that you're working in, but tell me about your process when someone like John calls and says, hey, God's calling me to this country. How do you take that person in, get them ready, and then send them out? Yeah, so for All Nations, um, our passion is to take the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ to people and places where no one has heard of Jesus. So we love to go to places where you literally cannot find a single believer. You cannot find a single Christian worker where you cannot find any churches. Um, So we want to take the gospel to places like that. And um, we are driven by that. There will be no place left on planet Earth, where Jesus is not known, he's not loved and worshipped. And and so we we want to see Jesus loved and worshipped, and, and that's our nations. And so we tend to go to the, uh, the places and the population groups that are neglected by the gospel, um, such as uh, Muslim refugee populations or, or in the ghettos or unreached people groups that no one is working with. And one of the things I love about All Nations is it's not just an American ministry sending out Americans to go. You have training bases literally all over the world. Yeah, we have different hubs around the world where we train. But another thing that we do do is um, we take our training to where our church planters are. So it's not like everyone has to, for example, come to Kansas City for our training. We have another All Nations hub, for example, in Kampala, Uganda, another one in Cape Town, another one in Hamburg, Germany. And those are the places we train and send out, but we will take our trainings to where our church planners are. Wherever there's activity, we actually take our trainings, make it scalable, make it mobile, give, a, uh, give our trainings feet, and we take it to where uh, the action is. 
And a part of that training is, yes, there's training, but then there's, okay, now go do it. Talk a little bit about how the, the training comes and then immediately there's opportunity, okay, put it into practice. Yes. So um, let me give you an example. In January, I was at our Kampala hub where we uh, were doing our flagship uh, three-week training. It's called Church Planting Experience or CPX. And so during those three weeks, we train people in core abilities. We don't believe in training people in just knowledge. We really believe in training people in competencies and also obedience to the word. And uh, so we train them in things like um, language acquisition, uh, how to share Jesus stories, how to make disciples, how to train them to make disciples, how to plant churches, how to multiply churches, how to contextualize the gospel message. And at the graduation, uh, every, everyone who graduated were given a certificate of graduation. But on that certificate was also the name of their coach. And what the coach does is the coach doesn't just say, hey, your training is over. Now go and do it on your own. Congratulations. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) But the coach is there to say, what God has called you to do, I am going to walk alongside of you. And we are going to do this together. And some coaches are there on site, um, some coach remotely, but our coaches touch base with our people uh, regularly to help them uh, troubleshoot, to pray for them, to set goals, to have accountability. Which is awesome uh, just to see that learning be put into action. And like you say, coach, pray with, encourage, keep going, uh, don't give up. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Mary Ho. She's the international executive leader of all nations. Mary, let's talk about North Sentinel Island, uh, the the place where John Chow went. What what is it going to take to get the gospel to the North Sentinelese people? Well, first of all, I think um, it's going to take a lot of prayer. After John Chow uh, passed away, I hear of uh, prayer groups and churches uh, rising up and praying for the North Sentinelese. Um, I travel a lot, and everywhere I go, I hear people say, I just want you to know um, uh, we are praying for the North Sentinelese people. And also, I think it has uh, really stirred up many, many hearts to take the gospel to the North Sentinelese. And uh, it's often people I don't know. Uh, for example, I, I hear of, uh, of workers in Africa and in Asia who have said, okay, we are committed to taking the gospel to the North Sentinelese. And and that just uh, that just warms my heart. I believe that uh, John's life has has opened the door to the gospel, and I don't think it'll be very far off before we celebrate there being lovers of Jesus, worship, and worshiping community among the North Sentinelese. Amen. May may it be so. I, you know, I think of. I had never heard of North Sentinel Island before last November, and I suspect there are maybe millions of people who would fall into that category. Now, as you say, there are hundreds and thousands of people praying specifically for God to move on that island. That is a a legacy of John Chow. That's a legacy of his ministry there. There have been some who have drawn comparisons between John and between Jim Elliott and Nate Saint and the Alka Martyrs of the 1950s, do you think that's a fair comparison? Well, I think the common denominator is that um, they love Jesus. Each one of them heard God's calling, and each one of them obeyed. They knew the price and they follow God's calling on their lives. They counted the cost. So I would say that is the common denominator. 
I know that John would have loved to get married, uh, have a family. Uh, I know he wanted to return back to his parents, his family. He loved them. He uh, he often uh, talked about them and how much he loved them. But he did count the cost, yes. One of the legacies of those men in the 1950s is literally thousands of people that God called into missions and ministry through their example. Uh, a whole generation of missionaries that is maybe at the tail end or even just retired would point back and say, you know, I read the story of Jim Elliot and, and God used that to call me to go to wherever. Do you see that in in John's case as well? It's been a year. Has Have you seen at All Nations a, an influx of people who are saying, wait, God's calling me after I read about John's sacrifice? I do think that um, in years to come, we will hear of many who will point back to John and say, he really inspired me. Of course, it's only been a year. I also think that John has inspired us with um, the realities of uh, what it takes and what it costs to to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations, and and that missions is not just a a romantic two week trip somewhere. <laughs> it isn't just an adventure. Since the days of Jesus Christ, since the early church. Uh, many, many men and women have paid a dear price to share the gospel. And um, Jim Elliot is one of them, and John Chow is one of them. But I think he reminds us again, not only to go, but what it takes to go. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and Jesus' call to take up your cross, we may think of a cross as something we wear around our neck or as something that hangs on the wall of the church— to the disciples that he said that to, a cross was a, an implement for executing someone. Um, so take up your cross very clearly in their mind meant this is going to be painful. This is going to be costly. How do we, how do we sort of reignite that way of thinking in the American church, which for many years has been comfortable and protected and free? How do we help people understand what you've said, that it is going to cost something in order to see some of these hard-to-reach places reached with the gospel. Yeah, I think uh, when we read the gospels and we read what Jesus said, that we will have to leave sisters, brothers, mothers, houses for his sake, that blessed are the persecuted. When we read about the first church, and what Paul had to go through, shipwrecked and stoned, uh, imprisoned and martyred. And then there's just so many biographies of um, Christian men and women who have gone before us over the centuries. So my husband's family came to Christ four generations ago through Hudson Taylor's China Inland Missions. Hudson Taylor ended up mobilizing something like 800 foreign missionaries to China, and many of them women. And they went to some of the hardest places to share Jesus. They went where other missionaries would not go. And Hudson Taylor himself, he he lost his wife, uh, Maria. He lost children there. When you read the stories of Ida Naram Judson, Uh, He lost his beloved wife and several children. But when we read the stories of the missionaries that have gone to the frontier lands, the missionaries who have pioneered new grounds for the gospel, uh, none of that is easy and is still not easy. So I think that for us to just remember their stories again, to tell their stories again, to recount their stories, and to honor them, and I think we'll be reminded again what it takes. Amen. And I would encourage our listeners, if you're a parent, if you're a grandparent, make sure you're passing those stories on to the next generation. Uh, My dad read missionary biographies to us. 
I think that's a huge part of why I work at Voice of the Martyrs today. Uh, So pass those stories on. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Mary Ho. She's the International Executive Leader of All Nations. Mary, we always finish up Voice of the Martyrs Radio by equipping our listeners to pray. I know there's still some things going on with John's case, with his family. I don't know how much of you can talk about that. Are there ways that our listeners can pray specifically for his legacy? Uh, yes, I I do believe so. Uh, first of all, I think to really pray for strength and courage uh, for the Christian brothers and sisters that are in India. These are the people that John really, really loves. It's good to pray for the North Sentinelese and also get a, a list of some of the people groups uh, where Jesus is not known and start praying for them. There's this one people group that many years ago was totally unreached by the gospel. As far as we knew, there was not a single believer, no one working amongst them. And so in our nations, we adopted that group and started praying and uh, sent a worker there. And now we have literally over a thousand baptisms and, and churches planted. So it all begins with prayer. And I would say uh, pray for John's family. Um, These are the people that's dearest to his heart. It's a huge, huge loss. It's hard for many of us to imagine. So I think to continue to pray for his parents, pray for his family, that the Lord would uh, just take uh, wonderful care of them and comfort them and, um, and bless them. And then the second thing I want to ask is how we can pray for all nations and for the ministry that you lead. How can we pray for you and for your team? Yeah, uh, for us, um, pray that uh, we have workers for the harvest because the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. I remember many years ago, um, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, um, we want to go where the gospel of Jesus Christ has not gone. What does it take? What kind of workers does it take? And he gave me 2 Timothy 2.2. As we know, uh, Paul trained Timothy, who trained others. But the Lord said, you want to pray for those who are like the hardworking farmer. You want to pray for those who are like the soldiers who can train and uh and obey. You want to pray for the athletes that will compete according to the rules. Those are the characteristics that you are looking for in workers. And so pray that we have the kind of workers who are like the hardworking farmer, the courageous soldier, and the athlete that will run the race to to win that imperishable crown. So those are the kind of workers that we are praying for, for Jesus to send out into the harvest. And if our listeners want to connect with All Nations, what is your website or or what's the best way to reach out to you? You can reach us at uh, All Nations, and our website is allnations.us. Allnations.us, and we will give you a link when you come to vomradio.net. Again, today we've been talking with Mary Ho. She's the International Executive Leader of All Nations. We are honoring this month the memory of John Chow. A year ago, he was killed on North Sentinel Island. Mary, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thank Thank you you. for helping us get to know John a little better uh, and understand his legacy. And thank you for your ministry around the world. Well, thank you. And thank you for helping our brothers and sisters all over the world. It is our honor to stand with them and to stand with folks like you. You've been listening to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. If you're just now joining us, you can go online to vomradio.net. You can hear this whole conversation again, as well as all the other episodes of Voice of the Martyrs Radio, the other guests that we've had. And I hope you'll be back with us next week as we continue to talk about what God is doing all around the world and about people who love 
serving the Lord. They love seeing the gospel go forward more than they love their own comfort, more than they love even their own lives. People like John Chow, we honor his memory this month. Join us again next week right here on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.